Hey everyone and welcome to the channel. If you're new here, I'm Wilson, a music composer and producer, and today I'm gonna to show you how to use contact in a multi-output within Logic Pro. If you're interested in seeing more content like this, please make sure you like and subscribe because it really helps my channel to grow. Here we go. So if you're not familiar with contact and everything it can do, it's basically a super powerful sampler. So if you've bought anything from Native Instruments, the odds are you've gotten some form of contact or some form of library that it runs. So all of that is in contact here. And if you're doing any sort of big projects, like I use contact a lot when I'm scoring like orchestral kind of like cinematic, like big, big, lots of strings, horns, that kind of music, I use contact. But the problem is when you load up like a ton of contacts, like one for every instrument, suddenly your session's bogged down with like 30 or 40 instances of contact. That sent me down a whole rabbit hole of making contact more efficient, and I found out the best way to do this is with a multi-output instrument. So you're probably used to it in a regular stereo output mode, so I'll just load up a thing here. Regular stereo operation is like, you have contact, it's set to stereo mode, you get drums, right? That's great. Multi-output will let you set multiple things in contact to go to a different channel in Logic. So if you want to, for example, set up a whole orchestra in contact and have every single, every single library in contact go to a different track in Logic, then I'm gonna show you how to set that up. And this is not limited to orchestral stuff. Like you can do this with any contact library, any combination of sounds. It doesn't even need to be Native Instruments product. If it runs in contact, this will work. Getting started from square one, um, hit this plus button up here to add a new software instrument track. Go ahead and hit create. Now I have two of them. And you're gonna want to go over to the side panel. If you don't see it, you can hit the I button and go to where it says instrument. And then navigate to wherever contact is. It's right here in my recents. Otherwise it would be down here in audio unit instruments, AU instruments, Native Instruments, contact. And you're gonna to want to go to one of these multi outputs. And which one you pick is kind of up to you. If you want lots of mono channels or lots of stereo or some mono, some stereo. I like to just do 16 stereo because even if the library is sending it in mono down a stereo channel, it's fine, but it's harder to go the other way, if that makes sense. So just pick the 16 stereo multi output. And when you first pull it up, it's gonna look exactly the same. And what you need to do is go to your mixer. So hit the X button to open the mixer. And now you can see, we'll just call this contact, tact. okay? So now the only difference you'll see when you load a multi-output instrument is this plus and minus right here. And as you hit this, you're gonna add little aux tracks. And what this does, you can see up at the top on the input here, like you still have your main contact, but then this is like contact three, four, contact five, six, seven, eight, all the way up. So this is actually setting up to receive multiple outputs of routing from contact. So if you go back into contact, let's pick a first thing. So let's do these 40s drums, right? Uh, great. I'm just gonna do a quick beat, cause I can. Great. There's my two bars of glory. Um, sorry, I'm just a little particular. Okay. Right, so we, we have a beat. Now, with the same instance of contact, I'm gonna go in here and open another library. So let's do hybrid keys. Okay. So now is when you hit that first hurdle, right? I've loaded a second instrument in contact and nothing's happening. So you need to go here to this I, and then you can see information about it. So this first library, you can see the output is one. Um, the MIDI channel is A channel one. On the second one here, the output is still set to one, but the MIDI channel is set to two. So the first thing we need to do is get MIDI triggering the separate library. And you can do this by going back to your mixer and highlighting these aux tracks that you just made and then right click and hit create track. So now in your main window, it's gonna give you auxes for everything that was here. So now you actually have physical tracks. And by default, it should automatically route the MIDI on these to B channel two. 
So if you go into this track dropdown right here, um, if you click contact, you'll see right here where it says MIDI out channel is channel one. So that's, that's that. But if you go down to the next one, now it says MIDI out channel two. And now you'll see when this aux one is highlighted, it's going to play our second library. So let me go back into contact and make sure we have our second library. We'll just call this keys, right? And I'll call this first one 40 drums. Okay, so this keys plugin right here. So now we've got MIDI triggering our hybrid keys from the second track, right? From this track right here that we made. However, the output is still set to one. So if you go over here to this little windows looking thing and click outputs, then you're gonna get this big mixer on the bottom of contact. And this is huge because I didn't even know this was here until a couple weeks ago. But you can go down here to presets and batch configuration and actually pick different output routings. So I made sure to hit the 16 stereo to match the multi output mode that I selected for the plugin. And so now I have basically 16 stereo outs down here that I can route things to. So now that we have the mixer pulled up and set up in the 16 stereo mode, you wanna go back up here to where it says output one on your second library, but instead go to output two. And you'll see right here it says routed three and four. So once we hit that, go back to the mixer within Logic and see where it says contact three, four, that's connected. So now when we play the keys, it's going to route it down that keys channel. So let me just put a keys part down to show you. And you can continue this process as many times as you like and just load up. So I'll show you how to do it one more time. Okay, so I've just pulled up glaze as another sound and I'm gonna go ahead and close this. We don't need to see all that right now. And go over here, hit the I button and we're gonna route our output to output three, which is five and six in the DAW. And then close this, go to our DAW, our five and six right here. I'm gonna call this glaze. And now, we have glaze. Some other things you can do with this, you gotta go pull the outputs again. You can label these outputs, call that 40s. And we'll call this hybrid. And we'll call this glaze. Right, and so now you'll see right here on the output, when we go to look, it'll say, you know, 40s hybrid glaze. Instead of one, two, three, four, it's a lot easier to deal with. Um, you can also route multiple things to the same library. So say we want this hybrid keys and glaze to trigger together and go to the same output. So we're gonna go, We'll pick number two for that. So MIDI channel two is set there. And then if we put these on the same MIDI channel, so go to port A from host down to two. Now they're both on the same MIDI channel and we'll set the same output. So they're both coming in on MIDI channel two and they're both going out to that hybrid output. Okay. And then we go back to our second one here, our three, four, our output two, whatever you want to call it. And now we're triggering both of those libraries, hybrid keys and glaze. So that's neat if you wanna blend stuff and then all you need to do is adjust the volume separately right here. So if I want like more hybrid keys than glaze or vice versa, that's cooler that way if you care. Um, that's how you can route multiple things to the same spot. The other cool thing you can do, and it's kind of a bonus tip for this video, but it's adding plugins directly into the mixer in contact. So when this mixer window is open, you have all these little drop down arrows and all of these can be a plugin. So say on our 40s drums, make sure that channel's selected. Right, we got drums. And then just go to whatever you want. Let's do a tape saturator. That one's hard to hear. Let's do the lo-fi. Uh, so now we actually are coloring that before it even hits the DAW. Right, then you can bypass it right there. You can also pick a preset and everything you can do with the regular 
lo-fi plugin, you can do right there. It just doesn't look as pretty. To me, this is a great way to get a lot of usage out of a single instance of contact, and I haven't seen a lot of people talk about it, so I figured it was worth a video. Uh, if you have any questions about this method or other applications for contact, let me know down in the comments below. If I helped you or you found value in this video, please make sure you like and subscribe. Thanks.